morning and congratulations. Thank Kweku, you. how are you feeling? I'm, I'm feeling really good. Oh, I need you to speak up. If you're feeling good, you have to show us that <laughs> yeah. you're very excited about it. I'm sure that for the first time in like two months, you've had a very good sleep, eh? Yeah. You yeah. have? I've never been so happy in my w life. Why so? <laughs> Tell me. Tell me. Well, um, I, at first, I didn't think, I, didn't, I, I was afraid that we would lose the case. So, oh, you were afraid? Yeah. Why, so why did you think you'd lose it? Well, um, being, I've heard that uh, Ghana has, is the third most corrupt country in Ghana. Mm. In, in, the, Africa, in Africa. In, yeah. So I was afraid that the judge would be corrupt and bribed. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> uh, well, at least with what we've seen so far, clearly it shows yeah. that you know the ju judge could not be corrupted, and they ruled yeah. with the law. Yeah. And so we're glad, but that was your fear. Yeah, but other than that, using um, looking at the take our lawyer used, which is the rights to education regardless of your mm. religion, um, I believe that that could go through, but. The corruption part that was. That Is it was, because of videos that you've seen in the past of judges yeah, being corrupted? Yeah. Or oh, that particular one from Anas? Yeah, yeah. I've been watching Anas videos of. Course. So you thought that that could actually happen yeah. to you? <laughs> wow. This is, this is serious. Mana, I, I don't know what you have to say about this. Did he ever share his fear with you? No, I just, you know, I just heard him say that on Star FM this morning, and I was amazed. You, you know? were amazed, eh? Yes. I'll come to you shortly, but let's just speak to our lawyer. Lawyer Chris Momhesse has just joined us as well, and we want to just get a legal understanding of the issue uh, before we come to the parents. Good morning, lawyer. Hello, good morning, Bella. How are you? How are you? I'm wonderful. I'm All right. Lady it's good to hear from you. And um, I don't know, what are your general thoughts about the ruling, of course, um, you know, uh, based on, on um, Ohinaba Kwekun Krabia's ruling yesterday and Raz Magai as well, that they can finally go to Achimota School with their dreadlocks and the school should not prevent them, um, you know, from getting education because of their religion. So if I understand it well, I hear this is a judgment. Mm -hmm. The judgment is the final decision of the court. Mm -hmm. And when it is given, the court becomes found to sufficient, meaning that um, the court's hands are tied. It, it cannot dress into the matter again. Anything concerning the matter needs to be appealed. Mm -hmm. um, and yes. So, uh, ruling is interlocutory matter. Mm -hmm. So that um, the court decides upon it and then the proceedings continue from there. Now, these matters are matters that we have spoken of in the studio, and uh, basically citing several um, provisions in, in, in the Constitution. The paramount amongst all the constitutional provisions is Article 28.4, mm -hmm. which says that um, a minor cannot be denied uh, or by way of manifesting his religious beliefs just because of... Um, uh, he cannot be denied his uh, right to education just because of his religious beliefs. Mm. So, I mean, there was no way Achimota was going to have a field day in court. Um, sometimes you wonder why some people will take unilateral decision and still not be in a consultative manner. Uh, and it was becoming problematic because we were seeing the advent of a number of religious intolerance um, um, amongst um, senior high schools. Mm. Uh, you, you realize that which happened at the Wesley Girls, where the headmistress had to stop uh, the, the young Still lady from, in her track from, fasting, yes. from continuing with Ramadan. Mm -hmm. And the, 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 the um, uh, how do you call it, the church came to support the that, school. that yes. decision of the headmistress. And other, other matters that were coming up. So this decision uh, comes to, to, to clear up the mat and, mm. and sanitize the system. Until, until the, the decision is challenged, that would be the jurisprudence existing in the country. I remember that they counter-argued, and not just Wesley girls, but, um, you know, the GES and, you know, a lot of people who were trying to bring up a counter-argue. I think they quoted another article, I think 24 or so, where it stated that even though as a child you can, you know, you have the right to religion, I mean, when it comes to a certain circle, you may have to consider that as well. Is it 17 I mean, or um, so? Yes. If you say Article 24 
No, I'm just um, quoting that Article because... Article 24 is economic right. No, no, that's what I'm saying that I think. So I remember that there was a counter-argument with another article with regards to this. And, you know, it, that's what a lot of people were thinking, that they might be able to argue this out with. Yes, as lawyers, as, as lawyers, we keep ourselves within the limits of the law. Mm. And when this matter came, a number of people were giving expositions to it. Mm. Uh, I remember that my encouragement when I was in the studio was that the family should go to court. Mm -hmm. And that is the only way we we'll put this matter to sleep. And I am happy that at the end of the day, some of the things that we said prevailed. Mm -hmm. Because there is no way that the court was ever going to agree with Achimota when the beliefs of those young students were manifestly in the Rastafari religion. Mm -hmm. Unless, of course, they argued that Rastafari is not a religion. Mm -hmm. Other than that, a, a unilateral decision by a headmaster or headmistress sitting in her armchair in one secondary school or the other cannot take a decision to abate somebody's manifestation of what he believes in, particularly mm -hmm. when uh, what that person manifests in is agreed mm -hmm. to be what could be defined as a religion. You see? So that's it. And it is, it is a decision in the right direction because mm -hmm. once there was no clear laid out jurisprudence in that area. It meant that people who conjecture, people who give unnecessary expositions, whether lawyers or not. But once a clear cut decision has been has been cut out, it now becomes the towing land. Unless that decision is varied or overruled or distinguished, then that is where it will bring a new legal proposition. But as of now, this has come in to rein in a lot of success mm -hmm. with respect to religious uh, tolerance because mm -hmm. it was becoming a problem. Mm -hmm. I mean, we had, we had coexisted and manifested our beliefs all this while, mm -hmm. but all of a sudden it was becoming a problem. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy that the Human Rights Court was able to nail it once and for all okay. until, that, until the decision it came up with is, is overruled by a superior court. Now, if you follow concerns from people, they're saying that the floodgates have been open for anybody at all to argue out, you know, a decision to not conform to schools based on their religion. And so let's just say that a traditionalist comes and says, based on my religion, we don't wear shoes, we don't wear clothes, we have to have a cloth tied around us. If we're saying that we should respect people's right to religion uh, and freedom to religion, then this holds as well. And so it makes it very difficult for the teachers and for the authorities in the schools to really ensure that these students conform to the rights. What do you say? Yes, rather, rather on the point of law, it is a very easy proposition to run around mm. because to every right, to every freedom, there is, there is a limitation. So that if you say you are even a Rastafari, let's mm -hmm. not even travel far to the traditionalist. You are a Rastafari. And maybe they, they put on certain adornments, they dress in a certain way. Apart from the manifestation of their belief by having their dress on, that person, that student, cannot import those things into the school. Mm. That student, even with the Rastafari hair, cannot say that cannot have the hair on camp mm. and run around. The rules of the school and GS will tell you that even if you're a Christian, you cannot have your hair in, 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 on camp. Mm. The teacher or the headmistress will tell you that, say, young man, cut your hair. That even if you're a Christian and you don't have, and definitely, you Christians don't do Rastafari. Mm. And your hair is not uh, well kept. We'll tell you to, to have, it, uh, have it properly done. Again, if um, you are a Rastafari, you will be told in line. It does not mean that you can put on the dress, so you are going to have it uh, on, on camp. Okay. If you stress the argument to a traditionalist, again, you have your calico, you have your stick, that's your, your whisk that you use, you walk, you walk barefooted and all of that. Mm -hmm. When you come to school on campus, the rule does not permit that. But the things that you do as a traditionalist to manifest and communicate with your God or lesser God, mm. you are free to do that. You mm. are free to be in your room and chant and do whatever you want to do, provided it is not going to affect your, 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 your neighbor. There is no problem. Okay. But once it is not in conformity with the rules, once 
you are not abiding by lay down procedures, then you'll be put in perspective. Mm. So I've heard, I've heard those um, um, expositions say, we, uh, traditionalists who can know we are working within a body of rules. Mm -hmm. And as a rule of law states, we must conform to the norms of the land. Okay. And that is what it is. Let me bring Ras Aswad in to find out. So with regards to this same issue that I raised, I mean, yesterday I think I heard Raswai speak and he said that there was even, um, you know, uh, they asked if the school could even allow them to tie their hair or so, yeah. and that didn't happen. Is that really true? Yes, um, we, we were trying to give them alternatives, you know, just to ensure that they would accept us in there by covering it, wrapping it, mm. putting a cap on it and tight, but they wasn't interested in anything apart from the fact that they wanted it cut or we leave. But that's very worrying then. Uh, yes, I mean, it's problematic. I mean, and that's why we are where we are today, you know? Mm. What do you think of the whole issue of even asking students to cut their hair in the first place? Because then this is opening up the conversation even further. Other parents are going to say, well, if students, if Rastafarian students are being allowed to keep their hair, why are other students being made to cut their hair anyway? Mm. Well, I think one of the first things is that um, education is supposed to be the whole issue of doing for self. You know, you go to other countries where those education system is set up to please those people. Mm. We think that Africans should have an educational system that pleases us and pleases our cu culture as well. The, the present situation that we have here with the mission school is that it was a colonial enforced guidelines and laws mm. that was set to denigrate Africans. It was deliberately set to denigrate Africans and to take them away from their culture and enforce a European value system of, of religion, mm. which was that European Christian value system, right? So that is where this, this, this present law is coming from. That is why there is conflict between the Muslims and the Christians. And even when you go on the church, they will preach and preach and preach. And even when you say, be quiet, let me answer my phone, they were ready to fight you, mm. right? Because of that arrogance and that, 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 that um, religious animosity. So it's, it's all the way, it's, 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 a, it's a historical reality from way back which needs to get out of the system so that Africans can really express their true selves. Mm. When, when is he going to school? We were hoping that that would be today, but I know that you also had no, to... No, it's, it's a bit too sudden to put them in there today because of the fact that, that this just happened. The school need to settle down and look at the reality that is there. I don't, because I'm sure they are in shock right now and it's going to take them a little while to get used to what has happened. Mm. And just to bring the hostility down for a minute, I don't think it's wise to go in there immediately. So in a few days, we'll think over it and yeah. work out the strategy. But that's, that's the thing. Are you not nervous? <laughs> are you not nervous? Are you not worried that with all that has happened, going into the same school that he had told you to cut your hair, now you've won a court case against them? Are you not worried about the hostility that you might face? Yeah. We're hoping I, it doesn't happen, though, but yeah. are you not worried? But I'll, I'll go through it. I've been through it since I was small. So You've been through what exactly? Um, people saying things about me, people looking at me. I'm used to those things. Why do they say things about you? Because of your well, hair? Because I'm different. I have dreadlocks. I'm, I'm Rastafari. And people have always had a problem with that? Yeah, some do. What do they say? Well, um, they, they don't get why I have I have to keep my hair. Okay. Um, because to them, having the low haircut is a normal thing. Mm. But when they see someone different, they, they don't like that. So. And so when they ask you, what do you say? When they ask you about your hair and your religion, what do you say to them? Well, I mean, I explain, I explain to them the reason why I have my, my dreadlocks mm. as a manifestation of my religion mm -hmm. and my cultural identity. So I explain to them why. Has it ever made you feel out of place, maybe? Has it affected the kind of friends you have and all that? Um, not really. Um, yeah, there are some people against me that, and there are also people for me. Who are for so, you. So. Mana, you, you are the mother. I mean, I, I can imagine how a mother even feels more for her child, especially when they're going through this level of discrimination sure. because of their religion. How have you managed all this while with your kids? Um, I think I'm the one that you know, got hit really bad mm. because <laughs> um, I have family here, I have friends here, unlike um, his father who is coming from, you know, the other side. Mm -hmm. and 
they are already in support because they don't see anything mm -hmm. wrong with it yeah. anyway. But um, with me who have had my family even against the fact that, you know, I'm yeah, keeping logs. I'm not a Rastafarian. I just, oh, you're I not a Rastafarian. It. It's his father who is. I keep it as a cultural identity. I feel like this is this is me, mm -hmm. right? Because this it comes out of us naturally. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do anything to it. You leave your hair for a month or two. You just wash it and then it locks, mm -hmm. you know? So um, I chose it as a, a, a cultural identity and as a hairstyle. Was that yeah. after you had met his father? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. And then... Um, I also I, I also kept it so that when people saw me, they wouldn't have to ask questions about his. Oh. You know, that was another reason so that you know when the moment they see they see me and they see him, they, they understand they, exactly. But even your family wasn't in favor of it. No, but but eventually, I mean, they saw my hair growing beautifully, mm -hmm. and and majority of them have locks now. Oh, no, they are now keeping us. <laughs> As oh, that's style. cool. Yes. Okay, but then know. even your friends, I can just imagine what they would say about you and your family. Yes. You know, they, and the they've always uh, looked at me as a weirdo, kind of, you know, like somebody who is who is going out of the door, you know. Is it just because of your hair? My hair and the fact that, you know, we, we are vegetarians as well. Okay. You know, so some of these things, is, it's not, you know, Common. the normal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they've always seen me, you know, like that. But, um, this one have been really difficult, you know, where I, I even, you know, ended up, you know, plunging into depression. Hmm. Yes. You know, I had to be put on antidepressants. What? You know, yes. It, it was really bad. Was it, it just it you or everybody in the family was also it, it, it was me. It was me because, you know, as a mother, you, 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 you are looking for the best for your child. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Ohinaba was homeschooled from when he was eight. He attended IPMC. I took him to IPMC yeah. at age eight. Mm -hmm. You know, they didn't even want to take him because they said it was a tertiary institution. I was okay. like, you know, just test him and see. And they took him and he did well. And so um, I, I'm always, you know, planning his life a certain way. So mm -hmm. you can imagine I have it all planned because um, it's his, his dream that he wants to go to MIT mm -hmm. and be at Silicon Valley. And so we've always talked about it and we, 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 we have it in a way where we don't want anything to, you know, stop him. Yeah. You know, so we have a plan and then the plan is intercepted and then, I'm, I mean, I'm, I don't even know what to do. Did you, you not know? see this coming? No, I didn't see it coming because um, I felt... They would take him, you know, being a day student. Mm. You know, I, mm. I didn't think that, you know, him going to school as a day student with his locks would be a problem. Okay. You know, uh huh. So I really didn't see it coming. And we were ready to, you know, compromise, tying the hair, you know, keeping it. In fact, his hair is always kept neat, you know, mm. so there wasn't any problem putting it in whatever way the school would have recommended. But then they were not willing to make room for any compromises any. Yeah. Cool. it's been about two months since classes started you know at the various secondary schools that means that you've missed out on about two months how are you going to make up for um, that not really i've not really missed out because throughout those that could speak months, up speak up for me give me some yeah. rastafarian energy <laughs> <laughs> or should i say rasta vibes, or something some vibes, yeah give some me some vibes, vibes or something <laughs> <laughs> okay so i've not really missed out um, throughout those two months, I have been on Wolo classes, that's an online class mm. um, for SHS students. So I've not really missed out. I believe I'm actually ahead of them. Okay. So it really doesn't make any difference. You yeah. just go in and just yeah. join them and carry on from where uh, they've gotten to. Yeah. You want to be what? An IT genius? Yeah. That's what you want to become. Yeah, creating softwares and. Oh, you want to create? So have you started working on that already? Well, um, I've been doing IT classes online too, mm. um, in in JavaScript and those things. So I'm starting from there. Then, as I proceed, I'll, mm. I'll get better. Russ is what we yes, heard so. that there were options for them to attend private schools, mm. and you know other schools had reached out to <laughs> offer admission to them since Achimota had not, right. you know, agreed for them to come to school without cutting their hair. Why didn't you take those offers? I think there were two um, reasons why those things were presented and um, some of them didn't come through. One is that when the GES decided to make the U-turn, mm -hmm. it means that all schools 
would have done the same thing. So Regardless when they heard that, they were private or not? Yeah, I mean, even if they were private, there were some who were still apprehensive about the whole situation. Mm. And then there was also a rumor. I don't know where that rumor came from and why it came about that you know people been offering these scholarships mm -hmm. so on and so forth, but nobody approached us. So that was untrue. Yeah, some of it wasn't. It wasn't real because up until today, we haven't seen or heard of anyone coming forth to say, "This is my name. This mm. is my number. This is my institution." Would you have taken? Oh, I mean, opportunity? certainly. I mean, you know, who would refuse an offer so full of compassion? You know, yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. So, so who would have accepted it? I see. And, and probably, who knows, maybe that's even another opportunity. But of course, yeah. the fact that you have won the court case alone yes. goes a long way to change a lot of things. Oh, For you, what does it certainly. mean? Well, one other thing that I, I really appreciate is the fact that um, the mm. judicial system itself in this aspect was able mm. to stand up. Just like Oyinaba said, that the issue of Anas, Anas situation is still leave an indelible mark on our minds that mm. when you think about the judicial system being so rotten, you know, and you know, you, you know that there are issues that you have to go and face that mm -hmm. judicial system. It, it will drive fear in you that one day these people will be honest and sincere and be transparent and all of that. So all of those, the, that legacy is still there. Mm. But I think this has, you know, Drive home, drove a point home to let them understand that citizens, citizens must be alert. They must be vigilant where their rights is concerned. So you don't just go to court and leave it just like that. You must stay behind it. Like, for instance, one of the reasons why the school is so upset is because of the fact that we ensured that the media, and the media is powerful, the media have a role and a responsibility to society, mm. and we ensured that the media participated, and they did participate fully. Mm. And that's one of the reasons why it is so impactful and so effective. And it has been a real pain, you know, to the, to the Archimota School because of the kind of exposure. Up until today, we haven't seen the authorities come out to address this issue from the beginning, up until today. Mm. They haven't come out publicly yeah. to address the issues. There was, there was a private meeting that I remember you all uh, yes, had where you were hoping. With the GES, and, yes. and nothing came out of that. So, you know, for me, for me th th that is the greatest thing, is that it, it, it gives us an opportunity to see that you can win in the court, mm. you know, if you, if you apply a certain kind of um, application, make a certain application to deal with it. Because, you know, I, I stayed up a lot of time in the night. I would go to bed by like 3 a.m. I, I would study every single thing that is happening in the media, both local and foreign, where this case is concerned. Is it? And I would share every single thing all and make contact with different people throughout the world with different cases that has happened elsewhere. Mm. And those are some of the things that we brought into court. So whenever I you see. have a, a situation where you have to deal with the court, you mustn't sit and rely on the lawyers alone. You mustn't sit and rely on the judicial system alone. You must ensure that the right thing is done because there's a constitution mm. and, and the law is there to guide us to do the right thing. And, and, and I really appreciate the fact that that was done. Is there a plan to become a lawyer? Because the way you're saying that you... No, you've... no, I'm a, I'm a, poli I'm a political activist, okay. social and political, and, I, and I'm comfortable being a social and political mm. activist. But what happens if the school appeals, if GS appeals? GS says, well, we're going to go with the ruling of the courts based yeah. on legal advice, but you never know what their next um, you know, uh, uh -huh. direction or their next action would be. What right. if they appeal this? If they appeal, we welcome it. We'll be happy if they, if, they go, if they go ahead and do that, we'll be ready to welcome it and go back in court I see yeah you mentioned earlier that you know you you decided to go with the media and make sure yeah. that the media was updated at every point so they yes. can also inform people were you not worried about your child being too exposed yes that was one of the concern of, 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 of um, his mother in the beginning that's why she got so um, depressed about the whole situation mm. because families were saying that oh the child is being exposed he's gonna be shame he's gonna be disgraced on and so forth but as a social and political activist, I'm used to it. I'm used mm. to, to, to dealing with, with issues like these where, you know, the engagement of the media with the issues at the end of the day will give you the results if you apply yourself properly because the media is going to just give you the stark realities once the media is not biased. Mm. They'll give you the stark realities and then it would, it would, it would you know, enhance public opinion. Mm. I see. Man, a final words from you. I mean, what do you say, especially about him going to school now, and everything that has happened. As a mother, what do you say? Okay, um, um, th th this situation has really enlightened me about life, mm. you know, because um, when the whole thing w was going on, 
there was lots of backlashes. There were lots of, you know, hateful comments. Mm. You know, some friends, you know, abandoning. They, they don't want to talk to you again mm. because they feel like, you know, to them, you know, you are destroying the child's life. You know, I mean, wow. I, I had so many things. And at the end of the day, I had to take a, a position, you know, mm -hmm. for the interest of my child and, and, and the bigger picture for other children and for posterity, you know. So I took that stance finally because at, at a point I was going to check in out like mm. um, 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 my son will say, the, the second one will say, typical Ghanaian. Oh, he told that's me, what he says. Yeah, he told me that. Because <laughs> at a point, I was trying to convince him about, yeah. you know, and, you know, was like, okay, why don't we, you know, cut the hair so that you can go to school? Oh, you actually consider that? I did, you know, and then he told me that, hey, you're the one who have been telling us that, you know, we should stand up, stand we should right. speak up, yeah. and, you know, this, this hair is our, our identity, and, you know, religiously this is the position our father mm. have taught us and he had to you know mm. you know bring my my consciousness mm. to the fact that hey i have i have taught him certain things and i cannot at this point you know sway from it and then i had to you know align myself back in mm. you know yes yeah, so it's been hard but i will encourage you know everyone that if you have an issue you should take it up, you know, instead of, you know, going the violent way, it, it will not, it will not amount to not. anything like mm. what happened with the uh, 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 Westy girl situation where mm -hmm. people were throwing tantrums all over the place, you know, threats and all of that. Mm. It's so not necessary. The courts and the constitution is there for all of us. The laws are there to protect us mm. and it's for us, mm. you know, so we have tested it and, and we, we, we've seen that, you know, it worked, yeah. you know, so... I would encourage people to take it up. Final question to you, Rasa Swad. I, yes. I, I wanted to wrap up, but I might ask anyway. There's the misconception out there that once you're Rastafarian, then you, are, you smoke. <laughs> and, you know, you're engaged in all kinds uh, of vices. And we've had uh, yeah. even people at the top <coughs> echelons make those comments that yes. Rastafarianism is associated mm -hmm. with smoking ganja yeah. and all that. And that's why a lot of parents were even agitated yeah. about yeah. it. And they yeah. said that maybe if a child like that comes mm. to the school, then they would even influence their children to engage in smoking and all right. of that. What do you say to this? Yes, uh, when you check the percentage of Rastafarians that is in Ghana and the amount of marijuana that has been consumed, it is a very minuscule <laughs> percentage, right? Mm. So who are the ones that are actually smoking? It's mainly the ones who are not demonstrating Rastafarian faith. So mm. a lot of children in there probably smoking and no one really is paying attention to it because they don't have dreadlocks. But I... I grew up in Jamaica where I was cultivating it. I, we you know we use it for uh, medicine and so many other things. Mm. And it, it's very, very popular in Jamaica. And I've never smoked, never. Oh, you haven't? Never, not even cigarette. Is it? Never, no. And I, I, I am over 60 right now and I've never taken... Um, wow. Yeah. Okay, that's surprising. I thought that once you no, are... No, there's a lot of Rastafarians who, who don't smoke, you know, because they look at it like you're burning the herb rather than using the natural fullness and strength of the herb rather than burning it and it becomes, you know, they see it as it becomes toxic once the fire touches it and it, it, the chemistry changes and so mm. on. So there are different philosophies. Rastafari have a lot of philosophy within it. It's not just one straight philosophy. Even in Ghana, here, there are four different organizations of Rastafari and they have their own little tenants, you know, where it is concerned. But... You know, when you understand faith a little more, you'll understand why some of us don't do it. So even that gentleman in Parliament who made that statement, Joe Osso, Osso, yeah, yes. it was dangerous because of the fact that you were trying to insinuate that these children using marijuana and they will carry it to school. That was mm -hmm. terrible. Mm -hmm. You know, you shouldn't have done something like that because you can easily get them into serious trouble by insinuating that. Yeah, but we do know that there are children in school who are smoking it anyway. Yes, but, but, but to say that, to, to, to make a statement like that for, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a blank statement across the board. Like, for instance, I don't smoke. I've never mm. smoked. I have no idea what it tastes like, mm. but I use it otherwise, but not smoking. What if you find out? I hope that Kweku never does, but mm. what if you find out? Or what if he tells you, I want to smoke it? He's uh, it, free. If he's you want, free? Yeah, he's free. If he, if he wants to smoke it, he's free to smoke it. He's not 18 yet. No, I mean, not at this, not necessarily not at, at this, this age, age. But yeah. when he matures yeah, yeah, and he like wants it, you know, to. When, if, I mean, if you get to a certain age and he wants to do it. Even if it's dangerous to his health, you don't mind? Well, you know, we, we live a very holistic lifestyle. So I am sure that that holistic lifestyle will apply 
to whatever yeah. he does where that is concerned. Mm, I see. Anyway, yeah. no, I won't ask Kweku. Yeah. Well, well, <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I have seen so many people who smoke. I, I have doctor friends who smoke. In fact, some people see me and they think that I, I might have access to it. People who are not dreadlocks, you know, they mm. would ask me mm. if, if I have some or I know someone who... <laughs> so they assume <laughs> that yeah. once yes, you're like... Yes, but I, I, I don't smoke, you know. But I know people who don't have dreadlocks who smoke mm. more. So that perception is very, is very wrong. It's mm -hmm. so wrong. And on Hinaba, as you see him here, the, the way you see him so calm, that is how... He is. he is. And so there's no way he's going to influence anybody's child negatively. If for anything, he will be a positive influence mm, in their definitely. lives. Yes. What's your favorite reggae song? Well, oh, um, you don't like reggae Legend reggae? by Chronics. Okay, I don't know who that is. But I'm, yeah, I'm told that you, artist, you, young. yeah, I'm told you designed one of Bob Marley's albums, um, cover. Not Bob Marley's, you know, there was Bob Marley, Peter Tosh and Bonnie Whalers, the, which was the Whalers. Yeah. The one that named Peter Tosh. I, um, I, wor I was working with him and I was touring with him on his uh, North America tour. Oh. So I designed the Mama Africa album. Okay. And the Muta Baroka Outcry. So those two albums I did. You, you should invite me over to try some vegetarian <laughs> meals and then we'll oh, listen yes. to that album. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And exactly. you know, we, we it will be great. Maybe we should consider we that. Will. We, will. We, <laughs> we probably will. should. But thank you so much for thank joining us much. and congratulations. I'm, I'm, I'm on a Kora and I'll tell you, you enjoy the school. It's uh -huh. a great place and I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Yeah? So welcome aboard the Akura train. <laughs> it's good to know you're part of the family. And yes, to everyone who's watching as well, I wish we could have given you the chance to also contribute to the conversation live on air. Unfortunately, our time is up. We have to go. But thank you. I've been speaking to Mana Myers, who is the mother of uh, Ohineba Kweku in Kravia. He's, um, you know, one of the two students who hitherto had been prevented from going to Achimota school if he did not cut his dreadlocks. Now the court has ruled and says you can go to school. And the court actually says that... Um, uh, the Constitution is clear in Article 28 and 21 that you don't use someone's religion to discriminate against the person. Article 21 is also clear that there's freedom of religion and so they should be allowed uh, the rights to education. I've also been speaking to Ras Aswad and Krabia, who is the father of Ohinibak Kwekun Krabia. Thank you so much for joining us this Thank morning. You. Thank you.